So we're on video 8 of Revit to Real, and we've looked at outputting all the base elements to the MakerBot, to the 3D printer. And what we're going to look at next are the elements that are too detailed for the MakerBot to print out. And we're, we're going to have to go to a different method of production. So, you know, we hid most of the glazing throughout the model for each of the base prints. So while those are starting to print out, the next thing that I need to jump in and do are the areas that are particularly important on the glass, that, the items that I make, need to make sure that I convey accurately. I need to go ahead and send those um, as line work to our laser cutter. And that will allow me to get a level of detail that I just can't get uh, on a 3D print at this time anyway. So let's look at this area right here in terms of this stage and glass area. Um, and let's go ahead and send these two pieces to the laser cutter and we can take a look at what we have. So I'm going to go to the entry level. And each time that I work on an elevation, what I like to do is set up a completely different view and then move all of those views to a sheet the same size as the print space or the cut space in the laser cutter. Uh, and that way I keep things really nicely organized. So inside of Revit, I'm going to set up a brand new elevation specifically for this glazing. So I'm going to go to View, Elevation. And uh, it looks like all of my elevation tags are hidden right now in this particular view. So let's unhide those. Yep, there we go. So um, just while this is hidden, I'm going to go ahead. If you'll notice, Revit is really nice about this. It's going to snap the elevation to adjacent walls. So I'm going to hover really close to this glass and place my view. I'm going to pull this back out just a little bit and then I'm going to select the triangle. It's a really important step. That triangle is basically going to give me my, give me my section mark that is establishing the elevation. Because remember everything in Revit is a section. You're always working in a section. Um, an elevation is just sort of another name in the Revit world for what's actually being cut as a section as is a plan. It's a section cut four feet above the finished floor height, so on and so forth. So this is how deep my section is cutting in, and this is the line that I'm getting that's giving me my width of the section. And again, I, get, I pull that line up by clicking on just a left click on that little triangle. And then I'm going to go ahead and navigate directly to that view just by a double click on the triangle and I'm going to click the, the uh, crop box for that view and I'm going to pull that down to isolate the parts that I don't need and then I'm immediately going to start hiding things that aren't relevant to this particular part so I can quickly get this drawing ready to go so um, how we typically set up our laser is we're going to use green lines to cut. So I, I like to, to just dive right in and make a line type specific for cutting. So I'm going, going to go to Manage, Additional Settings, Line Styles. I'm going to add in a new line, and I'm going to call this Laser Cut. A lot of times we'll use a laser engrave line as well. Usually in our world, green means cut. That way everybody knows what's going on in each file. So I'm going to set that to uh, a green. And if you notice, for our laser, that is a 0, 255, 0 on the RGB. And for most laser cutters, we're using a universal laser. Um, those numbers matter. That's what's going to tell the laser, pick up this line and cut it. If it was 251, um, may or may not work. So I don't just sort of pick a generic green. I make sure it's all the way green, green. So uh, from there, uh, the line weight is fine, set to number one. Um, to quickly trace this out, what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the detail lines. And step one is to get, actually step one should be, if you notice I'm drawing a dashed line right now, not what I want at all. I get ahead of myself a lot when I'm using detail lines. I need to select my new line type that I just created, laser cut. There we go. And I'm going to do a box from out to out on the glass. And the next thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to begin drawing 
the inside pieces of the glass along with the mullions. Now, right now, I really didn't do any work when I built this file about setting the structural size of mullions or anything like that. I'm a little too early in the process still to work through it. And if I look at the size on these mullions right now, let's just use the measure tool here really quick. They are two inches in size. And I knew if I'm working at a 16th inch scale, something that is two inches is going to be, um, you know, nothing. Uh, so I know that that is just going to give me a bunch of vapor. I'm, I'm going to have one large just bunch of nothing when this comes out of the laser cutter. So what I'm going to use is the offset while I'm drawing. So again, I'm going to use a square, but this time I'm going to use a four inch offset. So as I draw this square, the line isn't going to show up exactly where I'm going to, to, to draw it. It's going to show up four inches away. And I can use the space bar to say, is that to the inside or the outside of where I'm drawing? And I, of course, want that to be to the inside. So that allows me really, really quickly to just trace these mullions. with a larger width. And you know, if I was really fast and highly organized, I would probably know exactly how many of each one of these I have, and I would copy, 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 and move them around rather than tracing all of them. But you know, I'm, I'm an architect. I like to draw. I kind of get caught up in the mode of just drawing these little things. It's kind of, I don't know. I Call it a Zen moment for me, I guess. Um, and really for me, I don't know, this doesn't, if it's not, unless it's incredibly repetitive, you know, I'm drawing mullions on a skyscraper, I'm, I'm pretty comfortable with just going ahead and zipping through each one of these elements. Almost done, just a few more. So you'll also note that a few of these here and there, you know, I'm, I'm going to have a wider mullion on the center parts than I am on the edges. I'm completely okay with that. Um, again, not that details don't matter, but when we drop things down to this scale, it's almost going to be completely irrelevant. So if you notice, I'm going to go down to my elevation views. I do not want this named Elevation 1A. I want to keep with my naming convention that I set up on the 3D views. So I'm going to call this one ZZ Stage Laser 1. So that organizes all of those build files at the end or at the, the very end of my elevation views. And what I want to do next is move this to my sheet view. So I'm going to set up new sheet. I already have my family uh, title block loaded, which is a laser page, which is essentially an 18 inch by 24 inch page. And now I can just drag ZZ stage, stage laser one set at a 16th inch scale and place it top left. I don't really have to worry about hiding anything else. Um, again, the laser is only going to look at the green lines. It's not going to look at the black or gray lines. So it's perfectly fine to set that exact view up just like that. I'm going to go back to my entry level. and I'm going to spare you the time of watching all of this, of uh, watching me trace everything again. It's a little bit dull doing that. But I do want to go through the process of setting up that view one more time. So I'm going to go to View, Elevation. I'm going to hover over this particular view move it into the right location, select the triangle, make sure my view is set correctly, navigate to that particular view, again set up the crop exactly where I want it, hide the unnecessary elements, rename this view, rename ZZ stage laser 2 and now if I navigate to my page 
obviously I'd want this to be um, have all the laser cut lines on there first I can simply drag this view right into place and once I provide all the line work on there that will be set up and ready to go so sending this to the laser then is as simple as going through the process of the big R file print and then going through um, the, the correct printing parameters for whatever laser you might be using. So moving our file um, over to our computer that's attached to our laser, I have Revit open and essentially I'm going with the big R and print and selecting our universal laser uh, which is a V460 and I'm going through the system to establish green um, as the line type that it's going to pick up to cut and setting the power for that line type running through a preview to make sure that everything is still fitting on an 18 by 24 page always double check in that preview in your print settings make sure that you are printing out at 100 percent not at scale to fit which is the default and I'm essentially going to have just these four for right now in the top right hand portion of the cutting surface so you can see uh, sending that over to the laser is, is uh, starting up and the laser is really fast at doing this type of work. Um, usually only takes a few minutes to get these files out uh, from the laser cutter. Uh, right now what I'm cutting is just a really standard chipboard uh, which as soon as the cutting is done I'll hit with some white spray paint. And on a system like this as long as I'm laying the page out correctly what I do is I establish that page at the top left and continue to add files and just continue to cut those pieces out of the same piece of chipboard as I need to add on a few additional details or a few additional windows and I just you know essentially make sure that I'm um, discreetly hiding the viewports that had the existing or the cut portions on so these four windows that I'm cutting out right now I would just move off of the page and make sure I don't draw anything in those in their place I just keep putting that same piece of chipboard back in and keep cutting out of them. So the laser is just about wrapped up with all of those cuts and we'll pull one of the windows out and look at the level of detail that we can get with the laser cutter which again is a much finer level of detail than what we can get with uh, a current FDM extrusion printer. So it's just on its very last cut. It's going back to its home position. We'll open the enclosure and pop one of the windows out of the chipboard. So these end up being very delicate pieces because they're extremely small so you really have to handle them with care but because they're small um, they work really nicely to just really carefully glue them into place into the final model. So this piece right here should just about ready to be for a, a final coat of paint and you can see it's really a fine level of detail but it gets that idea of what the mullions are trying to do on the project.